I'm Jacob. And I'm Garrett. And this is Automoto Mods. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Automotive Mods that is brought to you by Water. On today's episode, we're going to be testing out some mobile phone apps. More specifically, drag time apps for the real car enthusiast who wants to know their quarter mile time, their zero to 60 time, but uh, don't really live close to a track or can't really afford it. Now keep in mind that none of these apps are going to be quite on par with the real thing, but we're going to take three apps anyway, test them out, and see how they stack up. So what apps are we talking about? Stay tuned and watch. First app we're looking at is Dynalicious. This app has a main display offering a simple start button, a speed indicator, runtime, distance milestone indicator, real time graph showing current speeds, G readings, and of course horsepower. Tap the skid pad button to get a reading on lateral, acceleration, and braking Gs, and record the results for later. In the results tab, you'll get a list of all the latest runs with details on trap speed, estimated horsepower, quarter mile time, as well as the option to share the results uh, and the graphs by email or social media. Over in the My Ride section, you can set up details about your ride, including weight, drivetrain loss, and mods. It also keeps track of your averages of zero to 60 and quarter mile times. Neato. Really? Dynalicious also has options for setting rollout distance, trigger Gs, measuring units, as well as themes and social media options. Calibration is as easy as using the calibration wizard, which then can be fine-tuned using the manual calibration features. So there's our overview of Dynalicious, but how well does it work on a car? Well, there's only one way to find out, and we've got the clip for you. Don't make me tell you again about the scooching. That's better. Now I'm getting it. <laughs> so we've got a new addition to the MM Garage, a 2013 Ford Fiesta. It's got a 1.6 liter engine pushing a whopping 120 horsepower the weight at 2,400 pounds. Now the nice thing about this car though, because we're testing apps with it, is horsepower is really close to stock, and because it has a six-speed automatic transmission, the shifting and acceleration will be consistent run to run. So let's go test it. Now our first run ended up giving us about 86 horsepower to the wheels, uh, with a quarter mile time of 17.82 seconds and a 0 to 60 of 10.24 seconds, which is pretty close to the posted spec of 9 seconds for 0 to 60 and 17 seconds in the quarter mile, uh, but not quite what we were expecting. After the second run, we ended up with 88 horsepower with 0 to 60 of 10.04 seconds and a 17.7 second quarter mile time, which is better, but still not as accurate in terms of power as we hope. After these two runs, we realized that when we entered the weight of the car, we entered the curb weight with the weight of the driver only. We didn't compensate for the added weight of the passenger and the cameraman, so we corrected that, and on our third run, we got 98 wheel horsepower with a 0 to 60 of 10.08 and a quarter mile time of 17.66. 98 wheel horsepower is much more accurate, especially when you take in the powertrain loss into effect and the estimated quarter mile and zero to 60 time stayed fairly consistent, which is exactly what we were hoping for. The results also stayed pretty close to the manufacturer's specs, especially considering we had the added weight of the extra two people in the car, plus a camera. So all in all, Dynalicious seems pretty damn accurate. Now the key to getting the best results is to make sure that the way the vehicle is set correctly and that the app is calibrated before each set of runs. The fact that you do have manual calibration on top of the automatic makes it really easy to get accurate results. The next app we'll be checking out is Pocket Dino. Sounds like a small dinosaur stored inside your pocket. <laughs> pocket dino. Pocket, pocket dino. <laughs> pocket dino opens up with a start test page, which is a traffic light that serves as a starting tree for your runs. It also allows you to instantly start the run and do a little time countdown before you do. During the run, you get a gauge that shows your current speed as well as acceleration in Gs. Tap over the garage tab and you can view saved rides and input weight and other specifics about the vehicle. You can even input modifications right down to the transmission type, although it won't affect the end results. The results page gives you a list of recent runs and show stats like max speed, estimated horsepower, trap time, acceleration data. There's no skid pad in this version of the app, but you do get maximum acceleration of G data on the results page. The settings page lets you change options such as skin as well as units of measurement and links you to helpful tutorials that help you use this app. Calibration is also easy to do and the app even tells you when it was last calibrated. Let's see how it does on the Fiesta. It does, I opened it, I was like, ah! <laughs> Get me out, get me out, get me out! Our first run with the Pocket Dino worked out better than we expected now that we had the proper weight entered into the vehicle profile. 
We ended up with an end result of about 98 horsepower on the wheels, 9.71 second uh, 0 to 60, as well as a 17.32 second quarter mile time, which is really close to the results we got with Dynalicious, and also really close to the factory specs. The countdown feature was also great for giving you that extra time to prepare your run, which is something that Dynalicious didn't offer. We did have one issue, however. On our second test run of Pocket Dino, the app didn't recognize the car accelerating, and ultimately the run failed. The cause of this wasn't determined, but it only happened once out of five tests, so we're not all that worried about it. We found that Pocket Dino is pretty accurate overall, it's easy to use, and although the paid version of the app does have some other features, it still doesn't have quite as many as Dynalicious. So we've got one more app to look at, and it's called GTAC. Like the other two apps, GTAC opens with a familiar start screen. However, GTAC uses GPS to calculate your speed rather than the accelerometer. Now, until you get a solid lock signal on the GTAC app, you can't use very much on this screen. Over on the results page, you get a section enter your run description for your records, along with all the standard readouts. Acceleration data, trap time, speeds, max Gs, as well as a nice unique feature, braking distance, which allows you to do a run from 0 to 100 back down to 0. On the graph page, you get a graphical readout of the last three runs you did, showing speeds, times, and G readings. However, it's only viewable in landscape and you can't resize it. The last tab is called the G-meter, which is more or less just a skid pad that has a real-time display of lateral and braking acceleration Gs. Uh, the thing that really let me down most with this app, though, was that there's no display of horsepower in the free version. In order to get that feature, you're going to need to shell out 20 big ones for the pro version. We ended up getting very different results from the GTAC than from the other two apps. Our 0-60 to 60 time was a depressing 13.11 seconds, with a quarter mile time of 20.22 way beyond the manufacturer specs and still over three seconds slower than the other two apps. Of course, without putting the car on a proper dyno and a track, we can't really tell how far off GTEC ended up being. GTEC offers some cool features and uses a different method to get its data, which is also kind of cool. But it seems to be a lot less accurate than using the accelerometer. And the lack of key features in the free version sets it a wee bit below the other two in our minds. So now you're probably asking yourself, how much do these apps cost? Well, that's where we were a bit unfair. Dynalicious is five bucks and the other two apps are free. That being said, Dynalicious does offer a lot more value for the five bucks. If you want to get that sort of value out of the other two apps, you're going to pay at least 10 to $20 on the other two. All in all, if we had to pick one, we'd definitely say Dynalicious is the app to go with. If you found this video helpful, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel for more videos. Also, check out our Facebook page for more updates. If you have any other questions, we'll see you next time. Uh, I'm on a mods.